Okay, welcome to the cockpit of this uh, cub, I believe it is. Default cub in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We are at uh, approaching 7,500 feet, somewhere over uh, the wilderness to the north of Santa Barbara. Uh, and I'm going to talk through some airmanship considerations uh, in light of Trevor Jacob's video of him bailing out of an airplane when his engine fails. So start up at 10, as soon as you have an engine failure you action any bold face actions, immediate action drills. Uh, so for instance there was um, bad noise, grinding, engine seized, you would shut it down, shut all fuel down to it. Uh, so mixture fully off, uh, switch off the magnetos, all that stuff would be switched off. If the engine hasn't seized and it's just a flame out due to fuel, maybe ice, uh, something like that, then you'd give it a go to restart. As long as the aircraft uh, is secure, you can have a think about where to land the aircraft before you start doing the restart drill. So I'm just going to look outside the cockpit. I'm not going to look from the external view because that's cheating a little bit. So there's nothing much actually over that way. I can see some flattish ground here. Uh, and that's far enough under the nose that I think will glide to it quite nicely. So I can start going in this direction a bit more. Let's have a bit more of a look around because got that area in the back, that is my safety net. Let's see if we've got anywhere else underneath us, because quite often, because you're in an aircraft that doesn't have a glass floor, it's not an F-35, you can't look through the floor, you won't know what's beneath you, unless you keep a good eye out whilst you're flying along. So I've determined that that is the area that I want to land in. I can now have a go, because I know I've got uh, altitude to spare, I can have a go at restarting, so I can put the mixtures in, uh, we can set the throttle, we can do the starts, uh, let's give it a go. Yeah, no, that ain't working. That actually gives you a bit of lift when you switch the uh, starter on, so <laughs> maybe, maybe if you're out of fuel, just use the battery power and the starter. Um, actually what you might find is, in some aircraft, that if you try the starter, you'll actually uh, increase drag until the engine starts, and if it doesn't, you've just wasted another thousand feet. So that is consideration. So if that hasn't worked, so we'll... I don't know what this black one is, it might be carburetor heat. Uh, but we pulled the, both those out, we've run the checklist a couple of times, and we're now committing to landing. Now before we... Oh, we don't want to stall. I don't know why we stalled there, because we're still up at 80 knots. Anyway, whilst we're up here, we'll go out on our radio. Now if your aircraft doesn't have a radio and you're flying over big mountainous terrain, I recommend getting a radio. I also recommend getting a GPS, and I also recommend putting something back here that is in the form of a survival pack. Um, but that's all part of planning. The other part of planning is, if you're going across mountainous terrain, I would change my direction to suit um, good force landing areas. So if you're going over sparse terrain, or, or hilly terrain where you can't land, I would make a longer trip to make sure that I'm always within gliding distance of somewhere. So all these considerations go in before planning. Also during the planning I think about the wind, uh, so I would um, know at this stage which way the wind's coming from. Now I'm presuming it's pretty calm, uh, so it's not going to be a, a factor for deciding which way to land. This, uh, this riverbed looks pretty good. This is a bit up a hill, I actually want to stay in the riverbed. The other thing you can look at, what's up here, is any, any towns or villages or roads, uh, and if you had the option, then try and put down next to one of those because it just makes the uh, the trek a little bit easier. Now I haven't really rehearsed this, I've tried it once just to see what the performance of the aircraft is, um, but I've got a lot of time in my hands to talk about it and think through the process. Uh, so importantly you need to be on the best glide speed. That'll keep you in the air the longest and gives you the most time to think about where you're going to go. I'm not sure what that speed is, but I'm guessing it's about 70 to 80 knots. That's through experience. If you go any faster, then you'll just increase uh, uh, your form drag. And if you go too slow, because you're needing high alpha to stay airborne for the slow speed, you're in, in, uh, inducing more lift induced drag. Both will result in you actually not uh, going as far as you wanted to and uh, decreasing your glide performance. So, really important to hold the correct speed. There is no point stretching it. No point diving down, you might as well just use the time you have to glide down. Other calculations you can do, if there's a, an airfield nearby, planning-wise, you could hit the nearest button on your GPS or know from the plan how far away it was, 
and you could guess maybe two miles every thousand feet is what your glide performance is and then you can work out if you can make it. Now I'd never go somewhere that would be bang on the numbers because uh, if you make an error then you just <laughs> run out of distance. But you want to get there with about a thousand to two thousand feet in hand so that you've got the option to maneuver into the best position. So I'm still eyeing up this riverbed down here. This is looking pretty good. In fact, that's looking pretty good too. I'd bet another radio call if, if I need to. I could try get a relay because um, every other aircraft should be monitoring guard if they've got two radios available. And they'll be listening out. So I could transmit a mayday. Hey, this is me. I'm in a hub. This is my location, GPS, or based on my map. Uh, I'm going to put down with an engine failure, uh, requesting assistance or message relay and then they can pass the message back. And the other reason why you want to glide for as long as possible is you can get that message out and they can start sending the helicopter to rescue you and you haven't even crashed yet. Okay. If you haven't got a radio, then it sucks to be you. Okay, so we're pretty much over the uh, landing area now. There are a couple of techniques. You can use a high key and a low key. Now, it depends on your aircraft type and glide performance, but. Usually for this type of aircraft, you can go with something like two and a half thousand feet AGL for a high key, uh, and about one and a half thousand feet for a low key. Uh, and the high key position wants to be at kind of the opposite side to which pattern direction it is, but in the direction of your landing strip. Okay. From that point, you then turn downwind to your low key position, and you're just monitoring your aiming point throughout that. So this is looking okay. Other options I have is this grass strip here, but that looks like it might be slanted. This patch here looks pretty good, but actually if I put down next to the river, I'll have a source of water if I need to. And it's also the flattest uh, terrain to traverse. So lots of good reasons to actually put down here. And you can see I still have all the time in the world to think about this. Why would you jump out of an airplane at 8,000, 9,000 feet when you might as well take it down. I could also try another restart. You never know, you're in the denser air down here, it's slightly colder, ice in the carburetor might have melted, and you can try the start again. Okay, what else are we doing? Uh, we're pretty much now in the vinegar strokes of the landing. So I'm picking my aim point pretty much here. I'm high key, about 3,500, well, 2,500 feet. Now I'm not sure what the elevation is, so I'm kind of guessing keeping my speed stable because if you start varying this you will vary too many you'll change too many things like I say speed is important to hold stable and just use the sight line so let's talk sight lines so if I look out to the horizon and then drop my eyes down that is the relative uh, looking down angle if my aim point starts drifting up I know that I'm going short I need to turn towards it if it's going down the cockpit or down the canopy then I'll need to uh, lose some altitude by increasing my ground track. I'll watch my speed. This is my aim point. Keep my speed stable. Here we go. So I'm just judging that. Now I'm not using flap either. I'm not going to use flap until I absolutely know I'm going to make my landing area. So the technique is to aim about a third into where you want to land. Once you know you're going to make it there, and the, how you know you're going to make it there is it's stable where you're looking at it. If it starts dropping down again, you're going high. If it starts going up, you're going low. As it is, this is a nice stable approach to this point here. Okay. At this stage, I can switch the electrics off. Uh, so secure the aircraft, make sure there's no electrics going on. I can unlatch the door if I'm worried about that. The speed's getting a little bit high, so I'm going to put the flap down. It's getting nicely controlled. Now, the river's actually grass, so ideally I'd land on that. But let's just pretend it's water. Definitely going to make this, so I'll drop another stage of flaps. And then I'll start my flare. And we're down. That must have taken at least five, between five and ten minutes to lose the altitude. and have all that time to go through so many drills. So there you go, there's my airmanship considerations in a type that I'm not particularly familiar with, but I've demonstrated though with a few techniques uh, that it's more than possible to land this safely, especially this type of aircraft. You're not just enjoying the view as the captain of an airplane, you should all be 
always be mindful of where you can actually land your aircraft. And if there's nowhere to land, then change where you're flying so that there is an option should the worst happen. Uh, and with that in mind, I will see you in the next video. Take care.